So this old Club Cart DS engine was completely wore out. So I had to make a decision, rebuild it or do an engine swap. So the purpose of this video was to show an engine swap that won't break the bank. What I went with was a Duramax, Duromax 18 horse. And I retained the original starter generator and the original clutch. I built my own exhaust. So basically all I had to do was buy an engine, buy a few pieces of steel to make some brackets. I did have to buy a wedge or a taper kit for the drive shaft, I mean the uh, crankshaft, so I could retain the stock clutch. Use the stock belt, main drive belt, different uh, starter generator belt. This is the finished product. It starts. Dies just like original. All right, I have a Duramax 18 horsepower engine just came today. Came in this box. Everything looks good. It actually poured gas in it, put oil in it, and it started first pull, ran smooth. So I'm putting this on my 1990 club cart and I'm using this, I want to use my stock clutch. So I took some measurements. I measured the depth of this bore, the depth of the stock bolt. So it sticks into the bore about five eighths of an inch. I took some exact measurements here. And I bought this steel tapered sleeve. This thing's got a shoulder. Sorry. This engine has a shoulder, so I figured out about how much I have to cut off. <clears throat> I also measured the bore for the bolt that would hold the clutch on to see how far it was uh, actually drilled and tapped. So originally it was drilled at 1.485, so almost an inch and a half. The threads didn't quite go that far though. And I basically need about an inch and three quarter. So I drilled it, the, the stock bolt. Where did I put it? <clears throat> the stock bolt is uh, three eighths. 24 fine thread. So I drilled it uh, 21, 21 64th, and it's a 3 8 by 24 thread pitch fine thread tap. So I drilled, <clears throat> I used the, you know, the uh, original bore to help line it up, drilled it straight. And I went in two inches total, not two inches more, but just two inches total. And I tapped as far as I could, just so the threads would start. So now I'm gonna, I marked with these two on here. And I made a mark all the way around. And I put this tape on. And I'm gonna fire the engine up. I made myself a little armrest. And while it's spinning, I'm gonna cut it off and hopefully it'll be straight. So we'll see how that works out.
flapper wheel to finish it off. It looks like it turned out real smooth. Pull the tape off. Just got to finish tapping it out. It looks real good, nice and straight. All right, so after I got it cut off, you can see where I had originally drilled it and started the ran the tap as far as I can. So I'm just gonna finish tapping it out. Handy little chain wrench, didn't even make a mark. And this is the uh, wedge taper kit that I bought. And that looks nice. So there we go. All right, this is with the clutch loosely installed. And I'm trying to decide if I want to take that spacer that came with the kit out and run the clutch even tighter. All right, this is the cart it's going into. I just kind of set it in there. Of course, I'm going to take the gas tank and stuff off of it, but, but with the spacer, the engine's hanging off. I think if I get rid of the spacer, it will help me a little bit. I did have to remove this because it was hitting the carburetor, so that'll... That'll help out a little bit too. So I think I'm going to take it back out, cut another half inch or so off the shaft. That is what we have. It actually fits in there nice. Kind of straddles. Cool thing about this, after I get the starter generator on, I'll always have my back up pull start it's pretty cool all right after uh, cutting that much off I'm with the wedge kit taper kit it had this spacer obviously goes on first it's still pretty far away so I decided I'm going to cut that much more off so I'll repeat repeat the process I don't think I showed this earlier, but I have the engine clamped to my table while I'm running it. So, all right. I gotta cut it again and tap it and drill it a little more. All right, so I cut it down. It's that extra half inch. So that's my taper. And then I <clears throat> re-drilled. I drilled a little further, tapped a little further. So I have about three quarters of an inch deep. So my original uh, measurement is about five eighths of an inch. Now this bolt sticks into the clutch <clears throat> when it's installed. So that's the bore. I measured that it's five eighths of an inch. So I got enough for that to thread in and should be good. This is the kind of the most, I was mostly worried about doing this, taking a brand new engine and cutting the crank down. But it actually, it actually was really easy. Um, I found running the engine and trying to cut it, it just ate my wheel up. So I still did it, <clears throat> put tape on it, cut it. And just put a little groove in it and then I just took the die grinder and just cut it off and then once once I cut it off you know it was a little jagged I, I fired it up and ran this paddle wheel and just kind of smoothed it out put a small chamfer on it and that that seemed to true it up really nice All right, 
Just built this bracket for my starter generator. This bracket actually bolted right in. I didn't have to modify it at all. Kind of hard to see here. I'll get a better view of what I, what I did. I just used a stock gas tank mount. All right, one of the things we have to do uh, for the fuel pump is to get a pulse uh, pulse line to the uh, crankcase on this. And some people drill this valve cover. There's a bolt hole, bolt right here. <clears throat> it doesn't go all the way through, but it goes into this cavity. I had the valve cover off. Um, but it was smaller, uh, threaded for a smaller bolt, something like this. So I went ahead and drilled it with a 3 8 drill bit and ran this eighth inch NPT, a national pipe thread, into this. <clears throat> so I'm going to install this, uh, this barbed fitting. But I'll have to drill all the way through with a smaller drill bit to poke into this. head cavity in here, which I'll show, a little, I'll show that a little more in depth. Also, cut this half inch plate, drilled it, and that's gonna be my flange to build my exhaust. Basically just took the uh, gasket that was on here and laid it, traced it. get to working on that here shortly. All right, so I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna do here. So this has a reed valve in it. It's like a double thickness. I figure I'm just gonna leave that, leave that line going in, because I'm gonna use the stock uh, air filter. I removed the base, removed the top, so I think it's gonna flow well, plus, the way this makes an immediate right hand turn goes up is going to give me more room in the cart. So, talking about this, this goes all the way, but does not go. It does not go all the way into this cavity. So I drilled this and tapped it with pipe thread. I should have showed the video before what it looked like ahead of time. <clears throat> But it was that smaller hole right there and it just ends. So I'm just going to finish that smaller hole, drill it into this cavity, and that'll give me my pulse line. There's probably many ways to do this. It's just kind of what I chose to use instead of drilling the valve cover. I thought it'd be a clean installation. So, all right, we'll get with it. All right, I drilled through the rest of the way with a uh, 3 16th drill bit. And I packed this all full of paper towel, shop towels, and I got no, let's see that hole in there. I got no uh, shavings in because I, I kept drilling it slow and I kept packing the drill bit with uh, grease. I drill a little bit, pull it out, clean the chips out. So I have a little bit of chips in there to clean out, but I'll probably grab a Q-tip, just kind of slowly get the stuff out of there. So that's how I did it. Worked out good. All right, so I set my engine in place and it doesn't line up with these holes, which I assumed would happen. So the whole engine sits over to like the driver's side. So I could probably take this plate off, refab, refab it, but I decided I would, I had this piece of quarter inch by, looks like inch and a half, same thickness as this plate. So I beveled it, both pieces, clamped it on there, I left a little gap, and I'm going to tack weld it 
put some good tack so it stays in place. <clears throat> and I'm gonna set the engine down and mark exactly where it goes. Then I'll pull that piece out, finish welding it, and uh, go ahead and drill it at that time. Just make it easier to put it on the drill press. So. All right, before I started this whole project, I put this thing together. It's a little jig with the original engine sitting in the original location. I took these washers and I opened them up a little bit to where they would slide over this bolt head and that bolt head and that'll hold it center to center. And then each one of these, if, it's, if all four of these points are touching both clutches, then everything should be center to center and square. Uh, it was just a little tool. I mean, this was scrap metal that I had laying under my bench and I just tacked it together. I put some red paint on it so it would, wouldn't uh, be camouflaged in there, so. All right, this was my little uh, clutch alignment tool that I made. So it's kind of hard to see, but that washer slides right on that nut. And the four pins go out and touch the clutch. And even made it so this piece would be touching so it all is lined up and it took me like 10 seconds and maybe half a minute to stick that on there so the engine should be perfectly aligned to the clutch the way the original engine was and all I'm gonna do is mark my engine location and uh, drill holes. All right, so I marked these, and then I came back and scribed it. That mark is right, I don't know where the center is. All right, I welded them. You can see where my scribe line, so I'll, at least I got a nice flat surface. Let's make a weld, the ground bound with a flapper wheel works out pretty good. It's kind of hard to see in the light. Okay, that's better. See, now I can actually see where I marked them. Okay, there's my uh, engine plate. I think it was overthinking this whole uh, piece of metal here on the side since the bolt hole kind of straddled so I just stitched it in there real good I didn't even take it off I put some weld on the bottom just climbed underneath it um, this hole is for the oil drain and I went ahead and I had to take a little bit more off so when I go to drain it it uh, you know won't run all over that also has a hole in the back. I mean, the engine has a drain in the back, and that is on a slant, but I figured if I change the oil, I'll just jack it up instead of putting another hole and making it weaker. So it uh, came out pretty nice. It, it's uh, 7 16 bolts, probably an inch and a quarter, uh, inch and a half. Right, so the next thing to you know, figure out is how to mount this box. Uh, for the starter generator where it's out of the way the carburetor and the battery so that's next up all right the next problem we had to address is this box because I want to retain the uh, starter generator so the battery goes here this there was two I cut one of them off but I'm gonna cut this one off as well so this was mounted to the inside of this frame on the other side. It was too close to the carburetor. So basically what I did, cut, cut both of these off. Then underneath here, right where this bolt is, was like a drain hole for water. But there was a little nub sticking out the bottom. So cut that nub off and I drilled straight through, put it on the frame a piece of two inch eighth inch thick angle it's five and a half inches and I had to go real close to the edge of the frame 
And then also, this box is installed. I drew a line, but it had to be real, really close to the edge. I barely get these quarter inch coarse thread bolts through. They're all just finger tight. I don't have washers on. I'm gonna take it back apart and paint that piece of angle. But it worked out nicely. Barely fit with the quarter, quarter inch bolts. So I like it. I'm gonna drill a couple extra holes for water, water seepage so it'll drain in case I get water in it. All right, one problem solved. Uh, so the next problem now would be the accelerator pedal. So when you push the pedal down, that extends. So I'm gonna have to make it reach up, reach up to this. So when I figure that out, I'll show you what I've done. All right, I got the uh, throttle rigged up. What I did is I took that rod and I cut it underneath, like right here between the throttle pedal gas pedal back here I just cut it and then I bent it up to the box now so when you push on the gas pedal so that's off you need it to where those switches so that shuts the engine off that's when you start right there so it works it was actually a whole lot easier than I thought and what I had to do is I had to add about a four inch piece of rod and I just butted it up to it and welded it Pretty ugly. That's that rod. I just welded it. Just, it's kind of tucked up in there. I think it'll be All fine. There's right, the starter generator bracket. You got it painted, cleaned up. All I did was uh, these arms are kind of come up at an angle, so I just put a bolt through there and a nut. I just kind of set these pieces on there. I was able to tack the nuts on. You can see they're at an angle, but I ended up welding them all the way around. I had to run a tap back through them. And one side's lower on these arms than the other, so it didn't really sit level. So when I put this other bracket for the generator on there, I just held it up where it needed to go, eyeballed it, put a straight edge from pulley to pulley, and that's the finished product. All right, there's a lot of skipped here. I actually got it out and rode it without the starter generator. I put the original tank and exhaust back on it just to try it out. So I kind of got this, this is a throttle cable off of a KTM 450. Uh, I did some rigging, but I got some adjustment. Problem is it's not opening far enough. I tried going back here, but it just doesn't have enough oomph. Too much stuff is flexing, so I have to work through that. But I'm just going to start on the exhaust. I'm going to get some other stuff done, but I'm just kind of winging it. This is uh, this is basically one inch conduit. Uh, it's actually from a fence fence post or a gate. I have a bunch of it, so I've made a bunch of stuff out of this. It doesn't seem to be as heavy as pipe. It's fairly thin, but it's heavier than probably the exhaust tubing. I don't really like the routing being close to the belt. But uh, that's what I got so far, and I'm going to probably try to hook this stock muffler back up to it, try to figure it out. So that's what I'm working on right now. And, uh, oh, I put a choke on it. I just drilled a hole in the lever, and I made this little bracket bolt onto the carb. And it doesn't look the greatest, but I took a couple washers and just bent them to hold that. And I had to actually cut a little bit off of this 
standard choke and I put it up there in the dash. So pretty much have to choke these engines to get them to start. But it ran good. It, it, if I could reach down and grab the uh, governor, it was hauling. But I kind of, there's going to be kids riding this thing. I really don't want to run it without a governor. So for right now, I want to run it with the stock governor on it. So there's more to come. It's coming along. I actually really like the way that throttle cable is, but I'm going to have to figure out how to get it to pull further. All right, I got the exhaust built. I'm going to get some header wrap for it. That stud I had to cut down a little bit. And it's going to be tight. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks, but I used the stock muffler and I got lazy. And I just welded the stock muffler on. So it kind of sits down, but you really don't have a lot of options. You can't let it, once the suspension goes through its travel, you know, the seat sits right above it. So, or I mean the plastic fender. So more to come. I'm going to make a bracket, a couple extra brackets to hold the pipe to the, to the engine. The engine's rubber mounted. So, you know, you have to remember this. This is going to raise up and down as the suspension travels. I bent this with just a pipe bender. old thing I have. Alright, more to come. Exhaust. That tab was already there, so I just added this piece that I made. And it was from the previous exhaust, so it's rubber, it's got a rubber mount, so I'll show that uh, here in a few minutes. Alright, that's how I mounted the muffler. It's got this rubber mount. <clears throat> I just welded that straight to the to the muffler. It's not the best. All right, I got it all wired up, and uh, it's kind of just temporary. But I was worried about the starter generator not being able to roll this engine over. But I'll show you what we got here. Good. When you let off the pedal, it dies like it should. wasn't quite doing it. So I took some 3 8 rod and just welded it right to the, uh, the little joints. And uh, I drilled another hole next to the original hole to get the most direct route. So I just had to put a slight bend in it. That seems to work much better. So now the throttle is opening all the way. Also cut off the uh, air filter stud, shortened it up a little bit. And uh, just kind of slowly buttoning things up, made a new battery, box hold down. And hopefully we'll be getting this thing. I'm redoing the dash. Somebody had painted them baby blue, so I actually sandblasted them, uh, Herculine them, along with the uh, rear seat frame that I made. All right, slowly getting there.
All right, I didn't make any videos on my front suspension when I did it, but it's actually, it's a Honda Quad 250X frame from the 90s, and it put 400EX A-arms and 450 shocks, so it's just a mismatch of a bunch of pieces. And I had to extend stuff, and I used the stock rack and pinion I took out, there was an extra joint in here. I took that out, shortened it up. Um, took the other stuff off here. and I actually threaded a tie rod from a Honda four-wheeler, threaded right in onto this rack and pinion. And I made this uh, set up here. <clears throat> and I used all the stock Honda steering and cut down the uh, steering st steering stem. And this is a bearing, the idler pulley that I just welded to the frame because there's a bearing in it. And I don't, I don't have the uh, steering wheel on right now, but it, it all works really well. Since it's aluminum frame, I just cut it back, bolted this on, and I put a plate on the inside I've actually used this thing for a year, taken it off-road, flexed it, and I've had zero problems with it. It worked out good. There was a lot of stuff I had to fight through to make it steer sharper. I had to lengthen, I had to lengthen uh, this so it would steer, uh, it's a, long, a bigger radius so it would steer sharper than like a four-wheeler would. But uh, after working through some of that, it all worked out really well. This frame wasn't compatible with these A-arms. So I cut the frame in half here. Um, I, added, I added this piece of tubing and I widened the frame. And what that did is that brought my cat camber out so it was close to zero and it gave me more faster. That way I could put the frame in there more level because the, the frame on the on a quad sits more like this in the front so I wanted it I just kind of wanted it more level but uh, it works really well on the golf cart and then the rear the rear suspension I just took some mismatched pieces flipped the flipped the frame over or the axle put on the other side of the leaf springs and there's like a couple of mismatched kits and I just kind of welded them in place. And it worked out really well. And the shocks, I just made these brackets and those shocks came off of a car. And I actually had them and they actually are set up for coil springs to go on those shocks. But it rode a little too stiff. So, uh, one other thing, these are quad wheels. And they're set up for disc brakes, but I don't I didn't put the disc brakes on the front yet. So the rear I wanted to put the same quad wheels on. And this is rusty because I got I just stuck them on there, but I made an adapter plate that bolted to the stock golf cart that would fit Honda wheels since they're so you can find them on eBay cheap and that's it. I know I didn't go into detail about the wiring, but it was about as simple as could be. I got the, the engine without the electric start, so all it had was this on-off, which basically all it does is ground, ground the coil and make it kill the engine. So this on-off switch just goes to ground, but it also has a, oil, a low oil sensor that I left on. All I had to do is unplug the oil, low oil sensor from the on-off switch and plug the white and black wire into that. And then I plugged the low oil sensor, it's actually the oil light from the original club cart, golf cart, and I plugged that and it just plugged right in. I didn't have to change any connectors or anything. So now 
as long as the engine is on, or you just leave that on, and it'll fire up, and when you let off the pedal, it'll uh, cut the engine off just like it was originally. And then if the low oil sensor, instead of taking the engine to ground and killing it like it normally would with this engine, like if you put in a log splitter, it'll make my low oil light come on. So, super easy, great setup. Uh, as far as the belt goes, for the starter generator, uh, this is what I went with. It's probably a little bit short because I'm completely out. I'm on the far end of the adjustment. I actually had to work to get the belt on. So I would get one just slightly larger than this one. Like half inch or an inch longer. So, alright. Now I just hook the other uh, charging ports up. All worked out great. Alright, I got my header wrap in. And I wrapped my pipe. And uh, I think I actually quieted it down a little bit. <clears throat> Soaked the stuff in water because I, I guess this is like lava fiber or something. It's, it's, it's worse than fiberglass. Comes this kit I bought. I bought it on Amazon. It's two inch by like 20 feet or 40 feet, something like that. It was $14. And I did this. Uh, vacuum line for my pump since it's so close to the header and I purposely left it away because it's super tight in here so I didn't go right up to it but um, I'm happy with that I think it'll help protect some of the uh, plastic and I ran it for a little bit heat it up and you can put your hand right on it where it won't scorch you so that's, that's a wrap. All right, I've got about uh, five hours on this thing since I've done the en engine swap. <clears throat> First thing, it was a little bit loud with that stock muffler welded the end of the pipe. So I added this uh, silencer off of a four-wheeler and I had to kind of heavily modify it. And I welded a washer to the end of it to uh, just, just testing it to kind of quiet it down. And I also took it apart and in the center of the uh, resignator tube. I welded a small washer to kind of force the exhaust to go into the packing on this thing. So it did quiet it down some. It's not too bad. Uh, had zero problems with it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to add, you know, if you're adding an 18 horse and you think you're going to get a ton of speed, uh, it's you know, RPM is RPM. So if your old engine was running 3600 RPM, you're going to be getting about the same speed. So I have my GPS. I don't know how accurate that is, and I, it was getting just barely over 20 miles an hour with this setup. That's with retaining the governor on the engine, um, but it does get up to up to speed quick. It pulls hard, goes up hills, uh, you know, pulls strong. So it's a huge improvement over the other engine, and it starts. You know, every time I hit the gas pedal, it starts. So that's nice. But my old engine was just completely wore out. I really struggled with it. So the point of this was to build, you know, a cheap cheap alternative to a stock engine um, it's not a show show piece or anything we're gonna use this and uh, I, I definitely recommend it